Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to a brand new camp build. We are working with the new flying fortress that arrived in the atomic shop last week. And this took a couple of rebuilds to get it where I wanted to, so odd timing here, but pretty happy with the results. So let's jump in and take a look, shall we? Okay then, so one flying fortress build. Pretty fun this one. I quite like the whole crash plane. It makes for a good uh, survivalist type camp. So as you can see, we're smack in the middle of the Savage Divide today, just near Emmett Mountain Disposal. The little truck icon there on the map is uh, the easiest way to find where we are. So we've got uh, West Tech, the National Isolated Radio Array, and White Spring over there. So nice central location. Nice easy spot to find as well. It's good this spot. There's a few interesting sort of bits of ground, and we've got a nice open flat area here as well. So plenty of options which is cool so let's get this flying fortress in first it's fairly huge to say the least we can only put the one in a camp which i know has aggravated some people but it is that large i don't really blame them the thing is somewhat awkward to work with and place so uh helps to have relatively flat ground here but uh building around the one is going to be the plan as it's just that huge but uh inside it works out roughly the same size as the train car but it's pretty cool overall there are a couple of things I do wish Bethesda had done a little differently with it. The staircase on the front, for example, I wish was not there. In fact, that front edge was just snappable so that we could put a, our own staircase in. It allows us to build across the front there and do different things with the entranceway, which is a little awkward to do with the current setup. And the collision box could stand to be a little bit smaller, especially above the thing, because I did want to do some kind of uh, crazy scaffolding type deal over the top of it. But uh, unfortunately, the gaps would have been way too large to make that look good, so... New plan was required. So we're going to start off here on the right of the entrance and we're just going to get a couple of uh, foundations in. We can set up a couple of areas outside the main uh, plane here and come up with a bit of an extended build off of it and then we'll dress the thing up and make it look a little bit more sort of shored up and like somebody's moved in and uh, sort of fortified the place a bit. So I'm going to nudge this outer foundation over a bit because the collision as I say on the outside of this is a bit awkward and that allows me to get sort of under it a little bit so we can have these foundations a little closer and not have too large a gap at the side there. To keep this looking suitably ramshackle which is in keeping with the crash plane look we're going to use a lot of these junk fences which we've had for a while. We're also going to use a couple of the other new bits and pieces which is cool but junk fences up first. Flip these around and press them up against the sides of the plane. Kind of creates a, a nice sort of, uh, supporting looking vibe as well as keeping it sort of junky and ramshackle and it works quite well all in all the textures are probably the highlight there as it mixes up those uh, surfaces we've got that's one of the cool things about this plane as well like we don't really have anything with a, this kind of texture in it so it's really a standout piece for that this pack that the plane is in also came with some bridges which are very very cool and uh, quite interesting but i was a little bit frustrated with the fact that they're so small Unfortunately, they don't go high enough for you to be able to walk under them when you built them. And though you can snap them to foundations in some ways, you can't in others, and they won't snap to upper floors, so they're a bit limited in some ways. You also can't really turn the corner with them, because we haven't got any pieces that don't have railings on the side. So, didn't find a place for those in this one, but uh, hopefully we'll get some use out of them eventually. So they are quite cool, they're just not quite as flexible as I would have liked. But we also got those new fences there that we've just had a look at, so we'll use some of those in a minute. But for the moment, we're going to mix and match with different textures, different size pieces to just break up this a little bit, make it look a little bit more scrappy, a little bit more wasteland, rather than doing uh, anything too neat and tidy, as this plane is going to, always going to look scrappy to begin with, so definitely going to keep that theme. Let's get this wall in, there we go. These metal ones are a little bit more temperamental than the wooden ones, they have a slightly larger, slightly firmer, for lack of a better word, collision box on the front there so getting them right up against the edge of the foundations can be a bit of a pain but we managed this corner is slightly awkward as the curve of the plane so we'll drop the little railing in there and then shore it up a bit further in a minute come around the side work this extra junk wall in if you get around to the edge like this and look along the length you can usually see the gap better which helps you push things closer for some reason when you can actually see what you're doing the game is more willing to position things closer to each other. Sometimes when they're out of sight it struggles with that, which I don't entirely understand, but apparently it's a thing. So we'll do this metal one again, keep mixing those textures up, keep it interesting. It's a 
bit wonky there. Match it over a bit. Yeah, man. Does want to pop up a bit, this one. There we go. One good thing about the slope of the ground here is it actually makes the thing look properly supported, which can be an issue on occasion. We've got one more junk wall on the end here. We've got a slightly smaller gap to cover up, and I want to make it a bit more interesting. So we're going to use this huge bulky thing here, which can be either great or really awkward, depending on the situation. In this case, we spin it around a little bit, not just as close as I can to the edge of the foundation here. When it wants to drop down, there we go. Yeah, and a bit scrappy. It got a few gaps, but it's not a major problem. We're going to be piling stuff up on the inside of them, come to decorate it anyway, so that'll conceal it quite nicely as well. There we go, very ramshackle, mixed matched. So we've just got this front edge to sort out. Here we are on to the new encampment fences that also came along with all the other stuff this week. These are pretty good. There's two different sets of them. There's one that does snap and one that doesn't. Unfortunately, neither snap the foundations, but uh, one is slightly more cooperative than the other. As you can see here, much like the communist fences from a few weeks ago, these unfortunately rotate on uh, an axis that's at the end rather than the center of the piece, unlike everything else, which is kind of a pain to position them sometimes, because as you rotate, they'll just sort of flip out of your field of view, and then you can't do anything with them. So that can be quite annoying. But they are pretty cool, make for uh, a different style, a slightly taller fence. They look quite good around sort of uh, farm plots, stuff like that, so we'll see in just a moment. But we've got a few big gaps here, and I definitely want to plug those up. So a couple of concrete barricades in there. Nitros next to each other. These are good for closing gaps up like that. So there we go. Sure the thing up, make it look a little more secure. We'll do the same with this gap on the corner as well. I'll add a bit more in the decoration phase as well. But I'll add a lot more in the decoration phase. Kind of went to town on that. You will see in just a moment. I'll stack up a few concrete filled tyres that are well worth grabbing if you haven't. Another atomic shop item. Things are good for plugging gaps, making uh, fences, making turret stands with all sorts of things like that. They're really, really good, these. Absolutely love them. So, it might have been a bit easier if I'd piled these up further away from the uh, fences there and then moved them in afterwards, but we managed. A little bit of persuasion, we got there. So there we go, we'll get a staircase on here. We'll do a bit more decoration later. And that's our outside area one created. Nice. Very, very junky, very scrappy does the job. So moving over to the other side. I'm basically going to repeat the premise. We're going to use the uh, foundation gardens or the uh, farmable tiles, whatever you want to call them, and sort of repeat the procedure on this side so we've got somewhere to grow some crops. Not strictly necessary, as you can see we've got the ground there, but it's going to look a little tidier, a little more interesting. It'll keep in sort of the vibe of the build, which is cool. So little pro tip here, if you can do something like this, that wing that sticks out at the back there is somewhat awkward because the collision box sort of follows the line. As you can see here, I can't really get underneath it either, which is a bit of a pain. So it's worth starting in that back corner closest to it and working out from there, and then you can get your floor pieces in as close as possible. I do like the little foundation underneath the plane here. That's handy. It certainly makes it easier to position on various surfaces. That's a good shout. So, with those foundations in, I'm going to seize the moment and drop a couple of junk fences in just beside the staircase here. There were a few different things I wanted to try out to make this entranceway just a little bit more interesting, but unfortunately the staircase both goes right under the ground, which is advantageous for uneven surfaces, but uh, because it's fixed there, we can't sort of change the entrance too much. It's kind of challenging to do that. I would like to have turned it around and come into the place from the side, had a little corner on the front, but... It is what it is, unfortunately. So I'm going to put a couple of junk fences there and we'll make it look a little more interesting in a moment. But back to our garden block. Let's figure out how I'm going to position this. We'll start using a few more of these just to shore it up, because as I say, it does look suitable for a little garden space, these uh, wired fences. So we'll have to nudge that into the corner as we can't go all the way over. We're actually uh, underneath the overhang a little bit here. There we go. These things actually have kind of two different surfaces to them, so if you go around the other side you'll see the texture is a little bit different, there's different sort of bars on it. So you can pick which way around you think looks best, which is cool. We also have gates that make completely the wrong noise for some weird reason. Not sure why Bethesda have done that, but uh, hopefully they'll replace that sound with something more appropriate in time. Just, that makes no sense at all. But there is a snapping and a non-snapping version of those as well, which is really cool. So. 
They are quite handy to have. Much more substantial than anything else we've got as well, so that's really, really cool. You're doing larger junk walls to make for a much more appropriate entranceway. Plus, you can dress them up a bit as well. Once again, we are going to mix and match a little bit. To be fair, I actually ended up taking that gate out during the decoration phase, and I honestly can't remember why. <laughs> but, uh, nonetheless, I did it. I think it might have had something to do with the tree I put there, actually. It was getting in the way. But, uh, for now, it can stay in there. We'll get a couple of extra fences on the side. One issue I did have with these fences is that they have a habit of, of uh, jumping up quite a lot. They kind of fly around a little bit. And also a bit awkward to place right up against the edge of the foundation. Sometimes they'll just sit on the edge nice and perfectly. Sometimes, like here, just didn't want to play ball for some reason. So to work around that, we'll go with a variation on something we do with some of the older fences we've got. Just to position one somewhere at the right height. In this case, just off to the side. Look down the length of it and line it up. And we're using the snapping ones here. Slightly uh, off position there. We'll have to nudge it a bit to the right. You see, it still wants to jump around a bit. So we'll push that over, and then we'll snap to the end of it and run along the side of the foundations here. So it needs to be a little bit lower on this side, just to change the elevation, make it look a little more interesting. Just a little bit more garden fence vibe going on. And then we can take the first one off. So I wasn't entirely happy with that little fence there. I wanted to mix it up a bit. Unfortunately, my various efforts didn't quite work, so I ended up settling on just sliding this slightly more uh, scrappy-looking junk wall into the gap. It fits quite snugly. A little bit of persuasion. Doesn't look too bad. Kind of wish I could get some of the grass to come back here. <laughs> Unfortunately, it won't, but uh, what can we do? We do with little tufts of grass that we can place down ourselves just to kind of restore it so it looks like it's growing back. So I wouldn't want to remove the bulldoze feature, but... Uh, being able to look like the grass is growing back in and around a more permanent encampment would be quite cool. The brambles in the atomic shop I need to keep an eye out for as they'll go a long way towards that end. So repeating the process once again on this last corner with a reverse junk fence. Just close that gap up, get it sitting as close to the foundation as we can. And there we go, a bit of mix and match, different height fences, looking good. So I'm going to go back to the entrance to make a couple of little adjustments to this set of junk walls. They're a little too close together here and I want to mix it up a bit. So we've re-angled the one on the left. I'm going to replace the one on the right with these cement tire walls. I actually ended up dropping another one on the top of this and adding a few extra bits of decoration as well, but we'll see that in the tour in just a moment. Never mind the farm on the right as well, by the way. My character started uh, starving and he'd run out of food, so desperate times called for desperate measures. <laughs> That got changed out in just a moment during the decoration phase, which it is time to have a look at, as uh, that is the main structure. So, one fully decorated product. I did add a lot of little bits and pieces to this. It's the sort of build where you can really keep just adding and adding and adding to it. There's still plenty of budget left as well, so you can really keep going and dress the thing up and create this sort of junk pile vibe in and around the plane there, which is quite a cool thing to do, because obviously that plane looks like it's been there for quite a while. So, quite like the look of this. Some of the new uh, concrete hedgehogs just chucked in as well, a few other bits and pieces. Needed a few turrets around, because this spot does occasionally get attacked. Fenced off a little area with a water purifier there, just for when we need it. And did some extra junk fences to the sides of the plane, just to, again, shore it up, make it look a little bit more like it's part of the larger build. Same thing around the back as well. It's not really necessary, but it just makes the thing look a little bit more complete and like it's sort of grown a bit more organically. Possibly have done this corner as well, perhaps, but uh, slightly awkward because of the shape of that corner. So finding something that would have worked nicely might have been a bit of a challenge. The ground's a bit awkward there as well. So we've got a couple of extra uh, solar panels there to power our vendors. We'll have a look at in a moment as they're around this side. Throw it on the corner here, a few extra signs. So it just shores up that little bit of fence a little bit more. Makes it look a little bit more complete. Take a little look at our vendors. So last week we got the saloon bar vendor and a few other bits and pieces to match it, which I didn't really want to use here. They're a bit clean. I would have preferred to keep, keep with the original vending machines, but unfortunately the space was a bit confined. So I had to take those as they're a bit smaller, but it kind of works. We managed to squeeze a few extra bits and pieces in here as well, which is nice symptomatic there in the power armor station plenty of stash boxes and other bits and pieces just to add some decoration as well and we'll open the gate and head on inside 
Really got carried away with some of the decoration in here, but it does look good. I'm quite happy with it. A little raid elephant uh, cage hanging over the entrance there, just to add a bit more dimension to it. Something a bit more interesting. That's a uh, corn in the corner and a few gourds to grab cranberry relish for the return of the daily challenges, which I've now completed for the current season, but they'll be back in a couple of weeks, so we'll be back to trying to level up every day. <laughs> Got a few uh, water collectors as well, which are handy. As uh, the nearest water is just far enough away to be a bit inconvenient from here. That's the one drawback to this location. So we'll open this ridiculously sounding, ridiculously noisy gate and have a look on the inside. Got a few bits and pieces on the walls here. Unfortunately that doctor sign is floating a tiny bit. Which not much we can do about that. It's just the surface of the uh, junk fence there. But sad, unfortunate, but did want something on there. Loads of bits and pieces added onto the walls here, some bone charms. Got our chemistry station and our brewing station outside as well. So I've recently set up a ghoul character who is going to be a bit of a, a chem-using cannibal crazy fellow. So I kind of had him in the back of my mind while I was building this place, hence the drug theme on the entrance. I do really like the door there to the Flying Fortress, but it's a bit of a pity we can't put it on anything else. Or any other doors, unfortunately, on this. You can kind of glitch some in, but... Yeah, I would like to have that door on other things. Quite cool. And lots of detailed decoration in there. Just uh, got what I needed in, in terms of the workbenches and stuff, and then just kept adding to it to add colour and de depth and dimension and all that stuff. So Here's a little something I forgot to show off on the Halloween build that is really cool and absolutely adore. <laughs> Land on the Matronic Kitten. Love it. <laughs> Things absolutely bonkers, but I love it. There we go, I've got a fridge in there as well to keep my uh, food preserved. Crammed absolutely loads of posters and the uh, season boards and all sorts of other stuff in there. I've got the camp unit tucked in the corner, a couple of weapons on the wall. A lot of benches down the end. The new fans on the ceiling as well, which is quite cool. They actually spin when you've got power to them, but uh, I hadn't realised this, so one of them is not spinning. Not enough room for a bed once I'd got going on this, so uh, I thought you can sleep on the sofa. It's in keeping with the vibe of the place anyway. A few displays. A load of the Valley Galleria and Burrows signs on the wall there as well. Just add a lot more decoration. I've got the chair off to the side as I didn't have enough room to get through otherwise. But yeah, crammed absolutely loads in there. Gave it a, a nice lived in scrappy junk pile feel, which I'm quite happy with. All in all, the place looks pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, I say so myself anyway. Just a couple of lights on the top there as well, just to give it a, a little more illumination, especially from a distance, and then you can sort of see it as you approach, which is quite cool. And through the satellite here on the top, because everybody seems to be doing that, so we'll give everybody on Reddit a little wave with that. So, let's have a little look around in the evening. All in all, the light on this works quite nicely, with all the gaps in the metal plating on the outside of the plane and stuff just kind of bleeds through a little bit which makes it kind of welcoming like an occupied ruin which is quite cool i like it a lot no need to go all the way around this time i don't think the uh bathroom facilities on the back there it's a one unfortunate thing fitting any kind of bathroom or toilet on this kind of a build is kind of awkward to find a way to make it fit in you always got a bit of a risk when you go to the bathroom kind of appropriate given that it's a port cabin Explosions going off in the distance. Yeah, put a few extra lanterns around the crops, stuff like that, just to give it a little splash of light, which I quite like. Some turrets in there. She nipped off to the bathroom uh, whilst I was building this, just as I was finishing it off, rather, and uh, came back to find a bunch of scorch attacking me in. They made the discovery that I hadn't got nearly enough turrets out because uh, they managed to destroy several bits of pieces before I got to them, so definitely worth having plenty in this location. I do wish turning the HUD off would make the uh, public teams thing go away, but apparently not. <laughs> Let's have a look around the inside. This entrance actually went through a couple of iterations for its decoration, partly because that door swings out so much, partly because I just wasn't quite happy with it. And the amount of power required for a decontamination arch that I initially put there was uh, absurd, so that had to come back out as well. But it gave more room for extra lighting, so I was quite happy with that little bit of illumination. 
plenty of warming lights. I use the oil lanterns or lamppost rather again, because they're basically my favourite light source. And it certainly illuminates all the posters and things on the wall and gives a nice splash of bright colour even in the night. Pretty warm and cosy feeling, which I like. So there we have it. One flying fortress crash plane build. So I do hope you folks enjoyed that, found it useful. If you did, please consider dropping likes and subs for me. It's very, very much appreciated. Social media links, merch store, and channel memberships are all available down below the video as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel that way, it's massively, massively appreciated. If you get the chance, do join us for live streams as well. We're having a lot of fun with those at the moment. So I do hope you'll join. For now, I will say thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.